Hello everyone and welcome to another MoTeC webinar. Uh, my name is Mark McCoy and I'll be your host for today's subject. Um, the subject today is proper use of the RefSync Capture. Uh, this is a feature that is available in our current range of ECUs and um, hopefully as I will show you it's uh, something you'll find very useful. The topics we have today are basically to start with what is a RefSync capture. Um, we move on to what ECU setup is needed, uh, how to actually do a capture, um, some of the options and features of the RefSync capture function, and then a bit of uh, the usual file management, sort of saving, naming the RefSync captures, and then how to actually send it on to um, us or, or someone else. So firstly, what is a RefSync capture? Well, basically, what we have is a like an oscilloscope type of function that's in the ECU software. Now this is for the Ref and Sync inputs and what it will do is when you start the process going it will record the uh, raw voltage signals coming in on both the ref and sync pins. Now you, you can't actually use this on any of the other pins, it's only the ref and sync inputs. So by using this for your um, ref and sync setup for your cam and your crank triggers, uh, you no longer really need an oscilloscope, um, something that you had to do in the past years on the earlier ECUs. Uh, now that sort of functionality is in the ECU software, so there's nothing else that you need. Now realistically if you are setting an engine up from scratch um, and you have no RefSync information uh, this function is absolutely essential um, and it uh, luckily enough you don't need to have set up lots of RefSync modes, edges and, and things like that before using it. Like I said it, it just simply shows the raw voltage on the ref and sync inputs. Um, it doesn't actually need any specific setup to do this. You simply hook up the ref and sync and then uh, do the capture. There is there is sort of one uh, exception to that which I'll, I'll get into uh, in the next slide or two. But uh, this function is available on our M84, M400, M600 and the M800-880. Just one thing that I will mention, it's not really designed for high RPM. Okay, so if you have a high number of teeth, uh, like something like a Nissan 360 optical, then you know it's not really suitable to try and do a ref sync capture at 8,000 revs. Think of it more as, a, as a, a setup sort of tool for either cranking or sort of low RPM. Of course, if you have a, a low tooth count, like maybe four teeth on the crank, then you know it's going to go to a pretty high RPM. But um, you know, you might need some other other tools at some point if you've got some high RPM misfires. As I sort of said before, you don't need to set up ref sync modes or crank teeth or edges or anything like that. Um, whatever is in the file will be fine. As I said again, it's the just the raw voltages. The one thing you do need to set up though is the ref sensor type and the sync sensor type. Now the main reason is is because we've got an option of a hall or a magnetic signal. Now in the ECU we actually need to turn on and or off an internal pull up. So for a hall sensor we have an internal 5 volt pull up and for the magnetic sensors we don't need that. So depending on the sensor you actually have wired up, uh, you definitely need to set the, the ref or sync sensor type before you do this ref sync capture. And then apart from those two numbers, there's no other setup needed. Um, just uh, so everyone can be clear, you can do this with just the power, so 12 volts and ground to the ECU, the communications obviously to talk to the laptop, and just the ref sync sort of wired up. You don't have to have air temperature and engine temperature and things like that. Uh, one of the little sort of test looms we have here is a, uh, a wiring loom that quite simply just has a positive and neg negative for the battery, uh, the ref sync wiring and uh, the communications and we simply use that to maybe splice that 
onto a factory car if we're doing some investigation on, on a, an engine that we haven't looked at before. So again, you don't need to have a complete running car sort of set up. You just need those few things just to make the ref sync capture part work. How to do a capture? Uh, it's nice and easy actually. If you go to up along the top of the icons on your ECU manager software, you'll go to utilities and ref sync capture. Obviously you need to be connected to the ECU with your UTC and uh, you need to have the ECU powered so the car needs to be on. Now the basic idea or the simplest way of doing it is start cranking the engine. Um, at this point I'd probably suggest having the uh, injectors unplugged and possibly the ignition system unplugged just so we don't really want it to start especially if uh, this is a, a blank config that hasn't really been set up to run the whole engine. So turn the key, start cranking the engine, hit capture down here in the uh, little circle um, and keep the cranking going until the whole process is complete. So what will happen is you'll get this uh, your usual sort of Windows progress bar and then like magic it will appear at the end so all you've had to do is click capture and then just simply wait. So my suggestion is generally to keep the uh, the engine cranking while you're doing this just so you know that uh, you're definitely getting the information while the engine's actually turning over. Just some of the options once you have the ref sync capture. If you click on options down the bottom, uh, it will give you this uh, fairly elaborate uh, set of options for the uh, for the function where you've got things like the minimum and maximum voltage. So this is like what is the scale on the uh, Y axis. So you can more or less zoom in and zoom out on a on a voltage level uh, scale. Now you just sort of have to sort of understand what this is doing. I, I had a customer who was a, a bit concerned that their ref sync capture produced nothing. Now they had magnetic sensors that on cranking had quite low output, maybe like a, a whole half a volt um, peak to peak, but he had his minimum and his maximum set to minus 10 and 10 volts. So if you think about it, like uh, because the scale on the y-axis is, is so large, a very small signal looks like no signal at all. So it was simply a case of just getting him to uh, redo his scales. And then, you know, hey presto, it all sort of looked like it should then. So just remember that one when you're looking, especially for magnetic sensors. We ca have a thing here called capture rate. Um, it's more or less, you know, dependent on the number of teeth how quickly do we want this uh, this capture to um, to work? Now my advice is quite simply to just leave it on auto. Um, I've never found the need in my uh, own personal experience to ever really change this, so it's probably not really worth sort of stressing about too much. Just make sure it's on auto, uh, and then if you're sending us the ref sync capture, we'll tell you if you need to change it or not. But it's kind of unlikely. Um, also just a, a nicety, you could probably do the horizontal divisions and the vertical divisions if you wanted to. That's these uh, sort of white dotted lines on the on the actual graph. And like most sort of programs these days, you get to mess around with the colors for the backgrounds and the labels and all those kind of things. So, uh, you know, go for your life on that one. Now, a couple of features. You can see that my ref sync capture here is mostly sort of yellow, so it's a bit difficult to work out um, what's going on. So that yellow one is the actual ref uh, signal that you'll get. It's a 360 optical GM sensor, and you can see the one in light blue there. There's the uh, the sync sensor as well. So what we can use is is down the bottom here we have a, a few little icons that we can use um, one of which is the uh, little magnifying glass there which will actually zoom in so if we look at our graph on the right hand side it's the same thing but just sort of spread out so it's, you can actually zoom in um, generally what you do is you would zoom in on a, a 720 degree cycle 
or if you were looking for uh, specific edges for maybe a magnetic sensor you would zoom in on the uh, right down on the signal so you could work out what you actually needed. We can also time shift and this is quite simply once we've zoomed in we can shuffle it along uh, based on time to the left or to the right. So that's a couple of different features for actually looking at the waveform once you've got it. The other thing we have is up the top we have our ref sync voltages and also uh, the first one is the time. So what you have here is if you are looking for a voltage level we have uh, the voltage level for the ref and the voltage level for the sync. Now they are based on where you've put the cursor. So you can pretty much click anywhere on this ref sync capture zoomed in or, or not zoomed in and it will show you up the top here the ref and sync voltages at that exact point. So always a good thing for setting trigger levels and working out uh, how much um, voltage you've got out of a magnetic sensor. Um, so it's there. Now another one uh, that is comes in quite handy sometimes especially when you've got fairly complex ref sync capture waveforms is if you right click just on the in my case the black area here you will get some options now you can simply have uh, show the ref trace only or show the sync trace only um, or you can show both ref and sync now I've chosen here just show the sync trace only and as you can see down here completely gets rid of the yellow part and just shows me the sync uh, you can also layer them as well so in this case um, right over here I've got the sync on top of the ref and if you can as you can sort of imagine if I swap those around it would all be all be yellow and you wouldn't be able to see the uh, blue sync trace so there you go personal sort of preference again it sort of really depends on the ref sync trace that you actually have saving and naming the captures are uh, nice and easy just probably like any Windows program we have a save option down the bottom you simply click save and you'll get your usual Windows um, box uh, simply start typing in the name uh, now just for our uh, purposes here at Motec, please don't call it RefSync Capture. Um, I sort of get a, a lot of these in the email during the weeks, and uh, generally people call them RefSync Captures, and then I suddenly end up with 24 RefSync Captures. Um, please think of a, a descriptive name because I might need to go look at these in a few weeks' time, and then I've sort of got to work out whose was whose. So like as an example up here I've put uh, my engine which is 4AG and I've said that it's at cranking so some descriptive type of uh, name like that is certainly helpful because like I said I get a lot of these every week and uh, need to be able to work out whose is whose so please don't name it ref sync capture sending it well if we're in uh, Outlook as I've got here will always have the little paper clip up the top for an attachment. Now when you're in a uh, version of software the ref sync capture will be saved into that folder. So as an example we've got C Motec M800 V35 for the, the current version of uh, M400, 600 and 800 software. So those ref sync captures will be saved in the same place as all of your tuning files. Um, you can see here that it's got the little sort of almost uh, oscilloscope type icon and there's my name. Uh, RSC2 is the um, file extension and also you'll notice here that they're all going to be about 65 kilobytes so they're all a fairly small sort of file and if you just simply attach that to an email and uh, send it to myself or one of the other support staff or maybe even your dealer they can simply save that file into you know whichever folder that uh, matches the software you're using and then we can simply open it here so for diagnostic purposes and, and helping people set up their ref and sync uh, it's a almost a, a 
it's an essential sort of thing and one of our favorite sort of additions to the software a few years ago okay that's about it for the RefSync capture I hope that's been uh, helpful to people um, as I say all the time uh, these webinars are actually recorded and then they're put onto our website and if you're not a member of our MoTeC forum um, it would be a good idea to join um, obviously we uh, have certain office hours and when we're out of the office uh, might be a bit difficult to get support so you know if you go to the forum there's people from around the world um, generally they will sort of be uh, awake to help you so thank you for attending and I hope you can uh, come to more of our MoTeC webinars